Welcome to this Schooling Online production. In this lesson, we will cover Module 1, Kinematics, and the topic, Motion in a Straight Line. We will introduce the concepts of scalar and vector quantities, which are addressed in the HSC Physics Syllabus Content 1.1.1 and outlined below. It's a peaceful day in the Big Apple. Mark Brent is walking to work, but is interrupted by a stranger wearing a hat and sunglasses. She asks for directions to the LexiCorp building. He tells her to keep walking 100 metres, turn left at the traffic light, walk another 50 metres, and it'll be on the right. Little did Mark Brent know that he was using scalars and vectors to help the stranger find their way to their destination. In fact, all quantitative data that we encounter in science can be classified as either a vector or a scalar. Simply put, vector quantities include a direction, while scalar quantities do not. This classification is necessary in physics since we treat scalars and vectors differently, particularly when performing calculations. To begin, let's consider the formal definition of a scalar quantity, or scalar. This is a quantity that consists of a magnitude and its units of measurement. For example, a distance of 10 centimetres is a scalar. The magnitude, or size, is 10, and the unit is centimetre. Furthermore, scalar quantities do not include a direction. This helps us distinguish scalar and vector quantities, as vectors always have a direction. In this example, the distance, 10 centimetres, is given without a direction, so it is a scalar. Let's look at some other examples of scalars to help reinforce this definition. After helping the stranger, Mark Brent walks into his office. He leans back in his chair, trying to think of a good article to write for the Daily Probe. The silence is broken by someone yelling in the far distance. Focusing his super hearing ability, he learns that the EM brakes on a maglev train aren't working. It'll be a disaster if the train reaches the end of the track at high speed. Mark walks briskly out of his office and informs his boss that he's taking a toilet break. The boss accepts unwillingly, saying that he has 10 minutes. Mark steps into the bathroom and starts the countdown timer on his wristwatch. Now let's take a closer look at the time, 10 minutes. It has a magnitude of 10 and units of minutes. Therefore, this is a scalar quantity. In general, Time intervals are scalar quantities because they include magnitude and units only. Back in the bathroom, we can see that Mark has transformed into the superhero Vector Man. Using his X-ray vision, Vector Man quickly spots the runaway train. He counts 163 passengers and crew on board. That's a lot of people that need to be saved. Let's take another look at the number of passengers, 163. This is a scalar quantity because it includes both magnitude and units. The magnitude is 163, while the unit is 1. Now, it might sound weird when we say the unit is 1, but this makes sense when you think about it. If Vector Man was counting down the time until the train reaches the end of the track, he would count 30 seconds, 29 seconds, 28 seconds, meaning that the units are seconds. When he counted the people on the train, he counted 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 163. Since he went up by 1 each time, the unit is 1. As a general rule, numbers like 10 and pi are scalar quantities with units of 1. Next, we need to consider vector quantities, or vectors for short. A vector has a magnitude, its units of measurement, and its direction. An example of this is 3 kilometres east. The magnitude is 3, the units are kilometres, and the direction is east. Since this is written with a direction, it must be a vector quantity. In the HSC physics course, you will encounter vectors in one dimension, like a ball bouncing up and down in a straight line, 
two dimensions, like a car driving around a racetrack, and three dimensions, like satellites orbiting in space. In the next few lessons, we'll focus on simpler 1D examples, but we'll eventually progress to analysing 2D and 3D situations. Let's catch up on the action in the Big Apple. Vector Man flies east, out of his office, and intercepts the train. He braces himself and pushes hard against it, trying to slow it down. The force he exerts against the train is two meganewtons west, which is large enough to buckle the engine and the train track below. It's a close call, but he manages to stop the train from going off the edge of a bridge. Vector Man saved the day! Let's take a closer look at the events that transpired. Vector Man pushed west against the train to slow it down. He wouldn't have saved everyone if he'd pushed it in the wrong direction. For example, if he pushed the train east, its speed would increase. That wouldn't help at all. As you can see, Vector Man needed to push the train in the right direction. Therefore, his force of 2 meganewtons west is a vector because it includes a direction. In physics, force is always a vector because it always occurs in a particular direction. Now that we have a clear understanding of scalars and vectors, let's compare their features. Firstly, when writing scalars and vectors, we should include their magnitude and their units. The reason for this is simple. Measurements are meaningless if they are written without units. Suppose that you have a class test coming up. Your teacher tells you that it has a duration of two. Hold on, does it go for two minutes or two hours? There's no way you can be certain unless your teacher told you which units they used. In a similar way, we should always show units when writing results. As we mentioned earlier, vectors have a direction while scalars do not. Furthermore, if we try adding a direction to a scalar quantity, then we usually produce an answer that doesn't make sense. Let's see how this can be applied through a simple scenario. Now that everyone is safe, Vector Man helps return things to normal. He lifts the front carriage of the train and places it back on track. As you can imagine, it's pretty heavy. The front carriage alone has a mass of 17 tonnes, or 17,000 kilograms. Now, let's add a direction to this quantity and see what happens. What if the mass of the train is 17 tonnes north, or 17 tonnes up? Perhaps 17 tonnes to the right? As you can see, trying to add a direction to the mass of the train carriage gives us an answer that doesn't make sense. That's because mass is a scalar quantity, so it only needs a magnitude and units. The countdown timer on his watch starts beeping, signalling to Vector Man that it's time to return to his office. Looking at a map, he determines that he needs to travel 3.5 kilometres. Just like before, let's add a direction to this quantity and see what happens. We can tell from the map that his office is 3.5 kilometres west of his current location. If he was to travel east or north, he would end up at the wrong spot. Therefore, Vector Man needs to travel in a particular direction. In this case, he needs to travel west. As evident in this example, it is possible to add a direction to a distance and get a reasonable answer. In fact, we have found the displacement of the daily probe from Vector Man's current location. Displacement is a vector quantity which represents the distance and direction between two locations. We'll discuss this further in our upcoming video on distance and displacement. In physics, there are many ways to indicate direction. Sometimes we can use descriptive words such as left, right, up and down. Other times, when we need to be accurate, we can use angles or bearings. For example, we could specify a bearing of 160 degrees. Pause the video here if you would like to read through all the examples we've provided. Another difference between scalars and vectors occurs when writing equations. 
In physics, we write scalars without any special formatting. For example, time is a scalar. In equations, we represent time with the pronumeral lowercase t. On the other hand, we use special formatting to help identify vectors. If you remember from earlier, force is a vector. We can represent this in equations by a capital F with a right pointing arrow on top, where the arrow indicates that force is a vector with a direction. This is the same notation used in the HSC physics syllabus and formulae sheet. There are other notations used in physics, such as a squiggle underneath or boldface, which you might see in some textbooks. Ultimately, the different notations for scalars and vectors allow us to easily identify them in equations. There are also differences in the mathematics of scalars and vectors. That is, we treat them differently when writing equations and performing calculations. For now, you don't need to know the fine details, but we'll discuss this in our upcoming video on dimensional analysis in HSC physics skills. The final difference between scalars and vectors occurs when drawing diagrams. Since vectors have a direction, we can represent them using arrows. For example, we can represent a displacement vector of 3.5 kilometers east by drawing an arrow pointing right. Similarly, we can represent 7 kilometers west by drawing an arrow pointing to the left. In this case, the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector, while the head of the arrow indicates the direction. We'll discuss this in our upcoming video on operations with scalars and vectors. On the contrary, scalars do not have a direction, so we just write the number and its units. As you can see, it's important to know which quantities are scalars and which are vectors. To help you out, here's a list of all the scalars and vectors that you will use in the HSC physics course. We've highlighted the ones that you will encounter in this first module, kinematics. Don't worry if some of these terms are new to you, because you will pick them up through year 11 and 12. Let's pause for a moment to consider the types of questions you might be asked in exams. Firstly, you might be asked whether a given quantity is a scalar or vector. You might also be asked to identify the similarities and differences between scalars and vectors. Additionally, you will need to be careful when performing calculations. If a question asks you to calculate a scalar quantity, then you need to include its magnitude and units. On the other hand, if a question asks you to find a vector quantity, then you will need to include its magnitude, units, and direction in your answer. Meanwhile, if a question asks you to find the magnitude of a vector, then you do not need to include its direction. In this lesson, we won't look at how to answer each type of question, since a lot of this isn't important until later in the course, when you perform calculations. To wrap things up, let's look at a sample question. Compare scalar and vector quantities. Pause here to think about your answer. Before we go through a sample answer, let's identify the key verb in the question. To compare means to show the similarities and differences. Let's start with the similarities. Both scalar and vector quantities have a magnitude and units. Then we'll finish with the differences. Vectors include a direction, while scalars do not. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. In the HSC physics course, you should understand the differences between scalar and vector quantities. A scalar quantity only has a magnitude and units of measurement. Time, distance and numbers are examples of scalar quantities. Meanwhile, a vector quantity has a magnitude, units of measurement and a direction. Force and displacement are examples of vector quantities. Scalars are written normally, without special formatting. 
In comparison, vectors are usually written with special formatting, such as a right pointing arrow on top. We can also represent vectors by drawing arrows. The head of the arrow points in the direction of the vector, while the length of the arrow represents its magnitude. We can check whether a quantity is a scalar or vector by trying to add a direction. If the answer doesn't make sense, then it is a scalar. But if a reasonable answer is found, then the quantity may be a vector. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on physics, check out our video on distance and displacement.